Hello ladies and gentlemen. Due to the nature of this tutorial, a few important things have to be discussed before we can begin coding. This tutorial is intended for intermediate users that deal with rendering dynamic database content on web pages. It is not intended for people that have static content written directly into a web page. You can learn to begin programming a custom code syntax highlighter for displaying code in a document with colored highlights and other styling features. This tutorial was requested by a friend of mine on Facebook last week. Now as some of you already know, many pre-baked syntax highlighters already exist, so you do not have to learn anything here. You can simply go grab an existing program that someone else wrote using their knowledge of regular expression logic. But there are a few reasons why a developer may have a desire to build their own from scratch. I'm not going to be supplying you with a complete robust program but I will start you off in that direction if you would like to continue the program and make it your own. Now here are several reasons why a developer may want to program their own code syntax highlighter from scratch. Number one, you may not like how much existing syntax highlighters slow down your documents. Number two, you may want to gain reputation by offering your finished program to other people online. Number three, you may just want a few key features instead of a very bulky program like most syntax highlighters are. Number four, you may get a certain satisfaction from programming it yourself. Number five, you may have this as a programming assignment in your school or for some kind of class. And number six, you may want to learn more and get better at regular expression programming for web projects. Completing a syntax highlighter program will assure that you gain experience and knowledge dealing with regular expression logic so you can really expand your skill sets by programming something like this yourself. First we'll take a look at how it works and what it's all about. Now let's say you have this web page that's rendered from dynamic database content that you might not even have prior knowledge of what the code is. It might be for a forum that you've built or some other purpose or maybe you're showing people how to code on your website and you want to display the code with syntax highlights. So as you can see there's no highlights yet which means it's not an ideal visual display for code. Now I've reinstated the program and I'm going to refresh the page. Now you'll see that all of the HTML elements have a nice syntax highlight. I've just turned them to orange which helps the viewer distinguish certain aspects of the code more easily. Now we'll go a little bit more in depth than just highlighting HTML elements, but I just wanted to show you that quick example before we get started. Okay, we're going to start off with this static example, which renders this. And our first goal is to highlight all HTML elements. And as you can see, I'm using the code element, which is ideal for displaying code in a web document. And then I'm just targeting all code elements in CSS here to give them the various properties that I want them to have and you can have more than one code element on a single page and the program that we're going to write will affect all of them so even if you have 20 code elements with different little code blocks on the page all of them will be highlighted by our program so right under the style element I'm just going to pop in a script element make sure I close that script element now you can externalize this program into a .js file that way you can reuse it for many different types of documents. We'll just make it a reusable module if you externalize it into a .js file and then just call it into your program using the script element just like you would call in any third-party framework or library for JavaScript. But for the lesson I'm going to code directly in this document but keep in mind that you can easily externalize this program you can also share it with other people online. And while we're discussing that, you can also externalize all of this CSS into an external .css file. So any of the pages that need code syntax highlighting, you can just call in the CSS file and the JavaScript file. Now the first thing we want to do in the JavaScript section is we're going to add the window load event. So we use the add event listener method for that. We target the load event and we're going to run a function called syntax highlights when the document is loaded. So let's just copy the name of that function and right above that line we're going to type in function 
syntax highlights, open close parentheses, opening curly brace, and closing curly brace. Now within this function, the first thing that we want to do is create a variable that's going to represent all of the code elements, like this code element. We're going to access all of the code elements in the document, and we're going to create an array. So I just called it CA for code array. And that variable is equal to document.getElementsByTagName code. So if you wanted to access all paragraphs or divs or buttons, you can use this method to access all of those type of HTML elements. And they'll be put into an array represented by CA. Now the very next thing we want to do is loop over that array so we can access each code element in the document. So let's write a for loop that's going to iterate over the length of the CA variable, which is code array. That means this for loop will run one time for each code element in your document. Now each time this for loop runs, we want to access the data that's inside of the code element. So basically all of this code. So we'll do that by creating a variable called data. And we're going to make that equal to the code array and the index number for whichever code element is being passed through the loop. And we're going to target its inner HTML property. That will give us all of this data. Now we're going to simply run the string replace method over that data using the two arguments that the replace method expects. So we say data is equal to data dot replace. And here's your first argument, which is a regular expression. And your second argument is what you want to replace it with. Regular expression logic will allow you to replace things. So we're going to use the global flag to make sure that we're replacing all instances where this regular expression is targeting data. So what we're doing is and LT and GT. So that's basically your code brackets down here. See and LT and then and GT. That's the that's the greater than and less than symbols. That HTML elements are wrapped in. And then here, we're just targeting everything that's in between them. So everything that's between the less than and greater than characters is also going to be highlighted and not just the brackets themselves. So where those things are found, they're going to re be replaced with this. So we're just going to wrap a span tag around them give it a class of code lm. So in the CSS, we're going to add that right now. So class code element, we're going to color orange. And for the replacement, you just put the brackets back in place around the variable that the regular expression produces. And I'm going to lead you guys to a document that shows you all the basics of regular expression logic and what all the little characters mean within your regular expressions. That way you can learn firsthand more in depth by yourself. And then finally, the last thing we're going to do is target that code element, its inner HTML property, and we're going to put the data back in it now that it's been replaced and highlighted. And I think we have a working program, so let's go ahead and render it and see what happens. Ta-da! Now we're going to work on highlighting strings. So if we go ahead and put another CSS rule, I'm going to call that code string, str for short. And let's just give that a color, any color we want. And I'll turn strings green. Now above where we did the first replacing for the code brackets for the HTML elements, we're going to first replace strings to make them green. And that gets this line with this regular expression logic. We're going to do a global replace for anything that's in between double quotes. Everything and the double quotes themselves and everything in between them will be styled with green using this span class code string. Now the order that you put these things is very important and the structure of your regular expression is also important so you might have these and quote in your code so you would put that here instead of the um, the double quote character. So you just have to feel your way around it. 
And as I said, I'm not going to build a very robust, perfect program for you. You're going to have to feel your own way around it as you continue programming it. I'm just going to start you off in that direction with the very basics. So now let's go down here into our little static example. And let's add something to this H2 element, like an ID equal to, in between double quotes, call it my H2, or H2. One. And now let's run that with the strings being replaced with green style. So you see, anywhere there's strings in there, they're going to be styled green. Or whatever color you want to make it, it's really up to you. And your strings will also be styled green if you're highlighting PHP code or JavaScript code. This will work for all of it. So to show you what I mean, I'm just going to go ahead and bring that code down one line and I'm going to add a script element here and then go down a couple of more lines and make sure I close that script element for my code example Let's see what we get okay that's good and in that script element we'll just put a little bar name equal to in between double quotes Adam now let's take a look at what we get so your string is highlighted in the JavaScript as well, or if you had PHP tags or whatever. And keep in mind in your code, you can just add another replace for single quotes as well. So that way, all strings that are in between single quotes will also be highlighted in green. You can do the same exact thing. And as I mentioned before, down here in your code, where your code is rendering into the code element, it might be and quote or and a pass. So that's what you would put here if you're in your code element if you're not going to have double quotes or single quotes directly in there you might have the HTML encoded reference for that symbol and not the symbol itself so you would just have to adjust these and take this and put it here instead like that you see what I mean and here's another quick little tip you can just string dot replace methods one after another you don't have to keep making a new line for data replace each time. You can just put a dot replace right here and keep going like that and make a long string. But I just wanted to set it up this way so you guys can more clearly see what's going on. And now to close up the tutorial, I'll just give you one more little example that will show you how to replace multi-line code comments. Or you can use them as single line code comments. So that means we're going to need a CSS rule for that. Let's put that in place. And let's go ahead and make that a color of a light gray. Whatever color you want. And now let's just go ahead and stick a comment here in our script where our script example is. And so this is a multi line code comment. And then we'll say create a string object variable. Now let's see what we get. All right, so you see we're highlighting code comments now. Okay, so as I said, I'm not going to go too in-depth and create a very robust program for you. And really, honestly, you doing it yourself and, and making all these nice little highlights and style effects in your code will give you a great understanding of regular expression programming. You'll be forced to learn regular expression programming and regular expression programming bleeds into all kind of different programming tasks, not just making a syntax highlighter. Regular expression programming is so important for a lot of advanced programming tactics. So it's really worth investigating and learning all the little tactics that you'll need to learn in order to make your syntax highlighter very robust and nice. Now here at Develop PHP in the JavaScript nuts and bolts section, I have uh, the reg regexp object, which is the regular expression under object section. You have regexp, which is regular expression programming. And down in the page, we discuss how regular expression objects are set up. The flags like the global flag, the non-case sensitive flag, and the multi-line flag. And then the special characters that are involved with regular expression logic. So researching these can help you really understand what kind of 
logic you need to put in place and accomplish all the little tasks that you're going to need to accomplish to target things effectively and replace them. Okay, I hope you found this tutorial helpful. And trust me, you don't want to chintz on your regular expression education. You really want to get that down pat if you plan to become an advanced programmer in any language because it works similarly in PHP and every other programming language. So once you learn it, you can take it from one language to the next. And honestly, you could hide all of, like this, for instance, is going to be open source viewable to everybody if they just view your source code of your document and then they go check out your external JavaScript file they can just steal your code but if you did all of this replacing in PHP nobody can see what you're doing which would hide all of your source code for all of this syntax highlighting logic for me personally I would just do it in JavaScript and I don't mind if people steal my code so that's that okay I'll see you guys in the next tutorial and please before you comment under the video, please listen to the discussion that we had in the very beginning of this video because it, the discussion we had might address something that you might feel like commenting about. You might want to link to some pre-existing third-party syntax highlighter and I'm just going to delete that comment. Uh, anybody can just Google search for a syntax highlighter program. They don't need you linking to the one that you like best, okay? so. Please refrain from doing that. And if I see other comments that are uh, reiterating things that I already said in the video, I'll probably delete that too because it's, it's just regurgitating what I already said. And there's no reason for those comments to come up. But if you have a question or a legitimate comment, please comment in and we'll try to get an answer for you. Okay, bye-bye.